dalam datisioni you will never see glory with anyone you will never see your glory with anybody almighty that is your name you are the lord that is That is your name. You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God. That is your name. Let us open our mouth. Let's praise the name of the Lord. Because he is the Lord, he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the mighty one in battle, the one that's never changed, the one that will not change, the one that continues to be with us, the one that will be continue to be, the one that has been with us, the one that will continue to be with us, the one that will be with us. He is Lord of Lord, King of Kings. The mighty one in battle. Let's praise his name. Let's glorify him. Let's worship him. Oh, it's like on today. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's like on today. Oh, Lord. I'm on the God who oh, is like green, glorious in holiness, faithful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah. Yeah, we like on today, oh Lord, we like on today. Oh Lord, I'm on the God. Oh, it's like green, glorious in holiness, faithful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah. Let's open our mouth, let's please sing. He has never changed, he will not change. He is Lord of Lord, the mighty one in battle, the King of Kings. Let's glorify his name. Let worship him. Let praise him. Let praise him. Let's thank him because of whom he is. Let's thank him because of whom he will continue to be. He has never changed, he will not change. Let's praise his name. Let's thank him because of his presence in our life. Let's thank Him because of His glory in our life. Let's thank Him because of His out of love. He's keeping us up to this period, up to this time. Let's thank Him because He has never changed. Let's worship Him because of His mercy. Let's thank Him because of this church. Let's thank Him because of the member. Let's thank Him because of the wonderful thing He is doing through us. Let's praise his name. Let's worship him. Let's 
Father, we worship you. Lord of Lord, we worship you. Lord, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of who you are. We thank you, Lord, because of who you will continue to be. We thank you, Lord, because of your mercy. We thank you, Lord, because of your glory. We thank you, Lord, because of your endurance. We thank you, Lord, because of your wonderful. Mighty Father, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. King of King, we worship you. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, because of all the member. We glorify your name because of all, all, all the every each individual family. We glorify your name because of your grace upon them. We thank you, Lord, for how you have been keeping them. We thank you, Lord, because of your provision upon them. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. King of kings, we worship you. Oh, mighty Lord, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, because of your abundant mercy. We thank you, Lord, because of your glory. We thank you, Lord, because of everything you are doing. We thank you, Lord, because of what you will still continue to do. King of kings, we worship thee. Oh, mighty Father, we worship thee. We worship you, O oh Lord. We glorify your name, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, because of your mercy. We thank you, Lord, because of the driving. We thank you, Lord, because of how you are keeping every one of us. We thank you, Lord, because there is no accident. We thank you, Lord, but there is no any one of us in the hospital. We thank you, Lord, because there is no shortage of blood. We thank you, Lord, because there is no shortage of water. We thank you, Lord, because of all our children. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. Oh, mighty Father, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Mighty Father, we will worship you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let what let praise the name of the Lord because of his provision on individual. Let's thank the Lord because it is not because our ability, it's not because of the work we are doing. It is not because of we can do it. He just out of his love is providing for our church. He's providing for individual. When we look at our work, when we look at our uh, uh, the income, we will see that it's not un- it's not comparable to what we are achieving in this church. But out of His love, out of His glory, He has been keeping us. Let's glorify His name. Let's worship His name. Almighty oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, because of Your provision. Let's thank God because of the way He's providing for every member. Let's thank Him because of His glory. Let's thank Him because of His endurance on every one of us. Let's thank Him because of our work. The work does not turn to poverty into our iron. Let's thank God because of the clothes. Let's thank God because of the of the of the shoes. Let's thank God because of the of of the feeding. Let's thank God because of the food. It's given to us, we're still able to give out to the other people. There's need to worship him, there's need to glorify his name. Let's thank him, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the mighty one in battle. Let's praise him, let's praise him, let's praise him, let's praise him. Let's praise him because of the money to be able to buy all these things. Let's glorify his name. Let's thank him, let's thank him because of the provision of how to pay the house bill, the provision of how to pay the, all the utility bill. Provision of king, the cast be the provision of, of, of all other things that is number num- too numerous to mention. Let's thank the name of the Lord because it's giving us a saving journey. I, I mean, it's giving us a saving journey that is part of the provision. Let's glorify the name of the Lord. Let's glorify the name of the Lord for able to breathe in is part of the provision. Let's thank the name of the Lord for able to breathe out is a part of the provision of good earth. Let's praise the name of the Lord because of the way He has been taking care of our extended family. Imagine if the they say somebody is sick now, we need to look for money. Let's start that we are saying that there's no damn money, we are going to find it. Let's thank the name of the Lord because of the way He has been providing for us. He's never leave us alone. 
Let worship his name. Let worship his name. Let's well worship his name. Let worship his name. Let worship his name. Let worship his name. The Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. Let thank God because of that provision. Let thank God because of the provision on the children. Let thank God because God has been God has continued to be with them. He has continued to guide them. He has never left them alone. Let thank God. Let thank God because of good health. Let thank God because of their school. Let thank God because of even all those things they are using to play. They do not lack. They do not. They, they are not. They are not begging. They are not inferior among their colleagues. God has been helping them. The glory of the Lord has been upon them. Let praise the name of the Lord because of all this. Let praise His name. Let glorify His name. Let glorify His name. Let glorify His name. Let glorify the name of the God is giving us money to provide for them. God is helping us to provide for them. Among their colleagues, they are not feeling inferior. There's a, there's a reason for us to praise the name of the Lord because of this. Let praise the name of the Lord. Let them go, let them go. He has been so merciful. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, providing for us to provide for them. Let praise His name. Let glorify His name. Thank you, Lord. Let glorify the name of the Lord because of the grace upon all our children. In school, God, God is providing for them. In all area of their life, God is providing for them. Let's open our mouth. Let's open our mouth. Let's open our mouth. Let's thank Him. Provision of good aid is part of it. Let's glorify the name of the Lord. Let's worship Him. Mighty Father, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Almighty Father, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Almighty Father, we worship you. Almighty Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's thank God because of his guardians. You know, there's many things you fed up. When we visited our brother in the uh, one of our brother today in the uh, preparation for the women program uh, you see a lot of challenges i thank god for his life i thank god for i thank god for his life but you see a lot of the challenges in the family it's like oh this assignment we fed up we fed up i've never thought of it but he, 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 he was the one that was encouraging the wife that let us move on let us let us continue to move on the grace of the lord is sufficient they look at that side is like way they look at the other side is like way but the the guidance of god has been upon them because the brother is very sure it is corny of god they are not doing it out of flesh let's thank god because of the guidance of god upon our life let's thank god because how he has been guiding us upon our family Let's thank God because of how He has been guiding us upon uh, upon those people who we are members in the church. Let's thank God because of those how He has been guiding us. I mean, in 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 coordination of our families, even in the in the in this part, that's me in Nigeria. You know, many times you you feel frustrated. It's like, why God? Why me? why god why me many of us does not believe that we are in this kind of decision if we are started narrating our way of life we will know that we are being in that situation we are just not appreciating the mercy of the lord let's praise the name of the lord let's thank him let's thank him because of his guidance because of his because of his love because of his grace if we are say uh, there will be a lot of time it will be like an accusation that's why i shut up some time just looking at every one of us but the mercy of the lord is just too abundant that is is just too big to mention it's too big to mention if we if we able to analyze it let's thank god because of his guidance let's thank god because of his mercy let's thank god because of his glory let's thank god because he does not measure or he does not visit us according to the work of our hand according to our eyes according to our ignorance according to our habit according to our character 
He visiting us because of the blood of Jesus Christ on the Calvary. Let us praise His name. 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 Let us glorify His name. Let us thank Him, the Lord of Lords, the mighty one in battle, because of His guardian, because of the way He's directing us. Despite all our insufficiency, despite all our shortcoming, despite all, despite a lot of things that does not worth it before him but still he does not leave us alone he's guiding us we are having testimony he's guiding us we are we can we can able to boast that we belong unto god we is guiding us we can able to see he is our god the lord of lord the king of kings and the people of the world know that he is our king he is our lord of law he is not because of whom we are it is not because of our it's not because of our, it is because of it's not because of our holiness it is not because of it's not because of our, our purity it is just because of his grace let's glorify the name of the lord let's open our mouth let's praise him we're praising let's praise him we're praising open your mouth praise the name of the lord glorify your glorify his name 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 Almighty Father I glorify your name. I thank you, Lord, because of your provision. I thank you, Lord, because of your guidance. Oh, mighty Father, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. King of kings, I worship you. Oh, mighty Father, I worship you. Lord of Lord, oh, mighty Father, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Oh, mighty Father, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. King of kings, I worship you. Oh, mighty Father, I worship you. Oh mighty Father, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Oh mighty Father, I worship you. Lord, I glorify you. I thank you, O oh Lord. For that him. He will now call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. He will call upon the name of the Lord. Every two we have been coming in. We are seeing the dropping of his mercy. We are seeing we are we are all what we are seeing is like spinning. It's like so many is is what you can do you know uh, recently i was reading an uh, article and then one of the richest person in nigeria gave another uh, another person 100 million something uh, maybe dollar or naira. i can't just remember and i now look at it oh lord this this is what a millionaire do for another person what about you you can do more than this you know there's a way god can block all the devourer in our life something you need to do once you have you are doing it two times you are like somebody like me let me make an example so that you can get what i'm saying there's a sign we call this to very the exam is about 380 dollars i think i've done it two times now still i've, I've never eat the cut off mark uh, many people say maybe that's not the will of God for me. My pastor even said that I should just hold on and keep praying that God open a direction. But I just want to make it an example. That's three hundred. That's three hundred and eighty dollar times two. That's about. Uh, it's getting to about eight hundred dollars. Now, if I decide to register for that exam again, it's getting to one thousand dollars. Something that is just about three hundred and eighty dollars. You can see the error. And then there's another way God can just open another way, and then another way can just open, or oh, that is not going to consume money. Another another way of the another another example I want to take as a, as a devourer for you is this: We go into a business, and we buy a car, and then we say, "Oh, this one buy, it sell this car for us." The problem is that the money does not come, and that's number one. And the money we borrow. That's a devourer. The intra, the, the 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 profit we're supposed to have on that car does not come. You can see it. The money does not. Let's say we have sit down, nothing. The bank will not say we own the money. And then there won't be trouble in our mind. The income we are having, we are not going to be using it to pay that debt. That's number one. 
the income we supposed to uh, be using to take care of ourselves, take care of the children, we started using it to pay a debt that we do not. Even. So the profit there, let's not say, by the time they sell the car, we have the profit of two thousand dollars. You know, we pay the ten thousand dollars. Bank will be able to give us another dollar. But two thousand dollars become our money that we can use for another thing. Then it's getting to about three years now. Maybe we will have done that business that about, uh, maybe we do two or three in a year. That's six thousand, six thousand that we will have, have another extra credit of fifteen thousand dollars. We the one back and borrow us. Then if we have that one as an asset. You know what the money is, but instead of having an asset, we now have debt. You can see the border. We now call upon the name of the Lord. All area devora is coming in my life. We are working, we are having an income, but income we use, we need to be using to 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 take care of ourselves. We are we are take, we are using it to pay a debt that does not bring a, a, a profit. Now call upon the name of the Lord. All sorts of devourer in my life, oh Lord. All sorts of things, things are eating me up. Instead of being profitable, it's just struggling. We call upon the name of the Lord. Father, block them for me today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. All area whereby devourer, there's a devourer in my life. There is a devourer in my way of life. There is a devourer in my way of activity. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Father, I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. This evening, block it for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I will take away my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you will take away out of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, man, Father, I pray by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. The whole area, the whole area, the whole energy that is over me in my life. Father, I pray by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, oh, Lord, you are going to remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, mighty Father, I pray. Oh, mighty Father, I pray. The only area whereby there is a devourer in my income. The only area that is a devourer in my task. The only area that is a devourer in one way or the other of my life. Father, I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. The time has come. In this evening, Father, I pray. Father, that may be consuming my big life, that may be consuming that do not let my head be raised up, that may be consuming that I do not let my head be raised up. Father, visit me. Lord, visit me. King of King, visit me. Almighty Lord, visit me. King of King, visit me. Take away from my life in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, I pray by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take away all the matter of stagnancy. I pray by the power of the Lord of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray. Oh Lord, block them away from my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Take them away from my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my Father, I pray. Lord, take the 
Before I come and laugh in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it before I come and laugh in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it before I come and laugh in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it before I come and laugh in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my Father, I have come to put on this. Visit me, O Lord, King of King, Lord of Lord, King of King, Lord of Lord. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, you will visit me, O Lord. Oh, my Father, you will stop all the sons of the world. 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 Power to be smart, the power to be smart, the power to be smart by the power of the Lord of Jesus Christ. You will keep on doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will keep on doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will keep on doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will keep on doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will keep on doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will keep on doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will keep on doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. And your name is going to be glorified. And your name is going to be glorified. And your name is going to be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I know each individual of us will come. I don't mind it. I don't need any extra time. But the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. We will call upon the name of the Lord. You know, when we come to a night VJ, I want us to know that we come to a night VJ. We listen to the message in the house fellowship. We listen to the message in the in the Sunday service. We listen to the message on the Monday Bible study. And then when we come to the night vigil, I want us to know that we come for night vigil. And I know uh, uh, David was saying. And then when I was crying, I couldn't remember how we say in the book of Psalm in the midnight. And I know God really answer his prayer. And I, 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 whenever I remember a lot of my prayer, God answered. It was during it was midnight. And if now since I'm sending all of them almost in the midnight, that's how you know how the how the prayer of midnight is very very essential. And then we when we come, I want us to see that uh, oh, by the time I'm living here today, this is my level. This where I am. This is my direction. Is Let's take away anything flesh. Let's take away anything bl- or a blood. Let let bring spirit in. As a result of this one, we will call upon the name of the Lord, Father. The, there's a one Bible. I only anybody that called me. They are seeking for counseling, or we are discussing together. There's a one Bible first. I always tell them. I always tell them. After they have said a lot of things, I do this one many times. My husband, I couldn't marry, I couldn't do any other thing. My my belief is that God does not have a bad plan for anybody. But devil does. Flesh does. Our blood our blood does. And as a result of thing, we lost a lot of battle the flesh. We lost a battle. Some of us, if we sit down and we able to, if we are somebody that very reason very well, I, I, I thank God I may not be smart, but I thank God for what God has been doing for me in my area of life. Many times I sit down and I trace, okay, truly, why do I, I mean, this kind of the problem? Why I'm this kind of the situation? I able to trace this. That this is the reason why I'm this problem, this one. Most of them is of unfaithfulness. Most of them is uh, I know a lot of things that cause it to let me be in some of the mess I find myself. But still, God has been so faithful. But there's a one prayer that always giving me a sign. I, I mean, I, I, I think my, the person that comforted me that that always let us pray that kind of prayer when I was 
with him and then that's psalm 126 if i uh, say get it psalm 126 psalm 126 psalm 126 you know some people say they always says one thing that uh, uh, if there's a person recommend a drug for you especially in, in our in our area he will ask you have we ever used it before if you have used it before how do you know that that drug is working and then you will be able to tell tell that particular person the result of that drug and uh, if you have not used it before it's like no i won't use the kind of drug because uh, I won't know what it will be the impact on me. This kind of all this prayer is prayer I've prayed, and I know God really answered prayer. One twenty six, one twenty seven. The Bible say, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, that prayers always be in my mind. I suppose to have married at the age of 23, 27, I married at the age of 38. But when God turn away the captivity of the Zion, I suppose to have graduated school at age of 21, 23, at age of 50, uh, getting to 50, I'm still in the school. But when God turn away the army, I mean, turn again the captivity of Zion. It was like a dream. I was talking for, with somebody recently, I think about three days ago, and we are talking about school. And I remember my closest friend, he always tell me something, and that particular mentioned that thing again when we are talking about three days ago. He said, Satisfaction is limitation. That's the, at the area I am, I'm okay, and the, that's okay for me. As far as you are not fraud, you are not. You are not cheating. You are not. Uh, you know. You are not doing anything in a way that does not glorify the name of the Lord. The Bible does not limit the way we should ask. The only thing he was against is against proud. If what you want to achieve is just to be proud of yourself, that I am, I am, I am and the testimony you want to be share, the everything you want to be do is just about me, me. And not that you are glorifying the name of the Lord about what you have achieved or what you have done. That's what that's where we are we need to be cautious. But as far as it is almighty God, and then you all what you want to do, all what you want to achieve is not about because you want people to know that you have arrived. You don't it's not because you want people to know that's when we are talking about flesh and blood. But when come to the uh, to the open check of the Bible, he says, "Call unto me, and I will answer answer thee, and show you the the, the mystery of life, the something you have never known, the something you have never is an open check. Call unto me, and then even for some of us that believe in the Lord, thank God, those people who does not even believe in the Lord that have faith in their ability." In, in in their in their power in their whatever they can achieve whenever they have that dream whenever they have that aim that this is what i want to achieve you know because they have that thing in their mind they achieve it then what about we the children or with the children of god the part of the open check is ask and you shall be given it doesn't say ask about this ask about that he said ask and you shall be given. He shall knock and the door shall, shall be open. He doesn't say uh, uh, knock the door of the uh, good age, knock the door of financial something. Knock the he, he mentioned it generally. He said, ask and you shall be good. He said, seek and, and and then you shall find. And then when all those things is there, and do not forget what really happened to Abraham. What happened to Abraham is this: Sodom and Gomorrah, I will destroy you. Uh, Abraham, you are my nearest person. I so love you. How can I do something without telling you? Abraham, I want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, okay, what about if you find one person? If I find, I mean, if what about you find 10 pe people? If I find 10 people, I will not destroy it. But Abraham was, was still thinking, is it possible? Abraham must have not been thinking about Lot, that Lot was there, his wife was there, and then after all, the wife, Abraham, Abraham must have been thinking about somebody like the wife, uh, wife of Lot. To the extent that why even God gave them a, an opportunity to run away, the wife of Lot had to look back. 
Abra must have been thinking about that kind of person. Maybe, maybe he has gone astray. If I mention Abraham, Abraham wife, Lord, man, maybe it's not countable. Then Abraham was thinking about, okay, what about if I mention, but what about if you see nine, if you, if you see, see uh, seven, if you, if you see six? And God is still saying, if I find five people there, I will save Sodom and Gomorrah. But the, the, the only thing Abraham was able, not able to do that, I did an open check. This man, I did, this God has called you. Abraham continued to be asking. Maybe what I, if Abraham said, what about if you found one person? And I'm fairly sure in the, in the, in the generation of Lot, there will be one person that still know God. Even Lot. Because among all of them that went out, it was only his wife that looked back. All other people, they went with Lot. So let's say Abraham went for that. Maybe God has most spared Sodom and Gomorrah. Who, who told me that they cannot repent? Jonah was thinking in that way, but Nineveh repent. If Abraham went further, maybe Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah would have been saved. So do not let us limit God. The only thing I'm just telling us is it. Be careful. When the promotion has come, when everything has come, it is not me. I thank God for how he has done it. I was telling the person we visited today, I, I think there's nobody I ever shared that testimony and don't share this testimony. That's about my English. Sorrow is the past of sorry. Then pass away instead of the person pass out. And everybody always laugh. But uh, 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 a brother told me one day, do you know this testimony she always, she always share? I brought a lot of people up. Because you are a person that have no faith, and out of that you don't have, I mean, you have no hope, out of that you don't have hope. Here you are today. So whenever you are, we want to do anything, let us make sure it is not flesh, it is not blood, it is the glory of the Lord. And that's the result of why we will not go back. It is not pride. Some people, when I'm telling them, they always said this, they, they always said this, but I know God what I I, I know God whom I'm serving, and I know who I am now, today, and I know where God is taking me to. And I know by the grace of the Lord, is going to take every one of them, every one of us to our, our destination in Jesus' name. Now look at what you're supposed to be. Let us be sincere. Look at what you hear now. But is there anything impossible for God to do? That's what the Bible says. Nothing is impossible for God to do. And this evening, I know if we can really pray and live this day and say, God, I really depend upon you. And I know you can do it. I'm praying out of frustration. I'm thinking I'm praying out of sweat. I'm not satisfied with the situation I am. And as a result of this, it does not glorify the Lord in my thinking, in my area of life, in the way I'm acting, in the way people are looking at me. And instead of glorifying the name of the Lord, he's sending people away from the Lord. If my wife cannot proud of me, he's sending people away from the Lord. If I cannot proud of my wife, he's sending people away from the Lord. If you cannot proud of any situation of your life, he's sending people away from the Lord. And anything that is not glorifying the name of the Lord in our life, we need to look at where we are coming from. We need to look at where we are. And we need to tell God, if you truly you are God and the God of Abraham, you do this kind of thing, and you do it for Abraham, when Abraham was at age of 95, and the wife was at age of 75, and then God was saying, I'm God, I'm the one that brought you out of the all, and I call you. And I take you out of the ark, and I say, I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to do this for you. I was the one I promised you about that 15 years ago, after I was one year ago. And then that promise was still there, I can still fulfill it. That's what I, everybody believed that at this age, you as a man, you can never be productive. Your wife at this age, as a woman, you can never be productive. But I'm telling you that I'm God, you will be productive. And this tell Abraham, Abraham look at him, and Sarah, Sarah look at her, look at her, see. I know you are the one that created me. But uh, with my experience in my family, there was somebody that said your 75, is, she has never born again. There 
There was somebody in my near place. Yeah, yeah, he was, she was age of 75. He, she has never had a children again. There's a somebody here and there in this environment. I tell you, 75, they were never loved. Then you can see the reason why Sarah laughed. So God, you can be a joker. But God told I, I but Abraham, I God told Abraham, I am the Lord and I'm the one that said you have to have a children. And it was at the age where everybody believed that all the woman be close. There's no melosis or what do they call it again? That was the time Sarah had the child. So you cannot see the reason why, because David was so, I mean, David was so faithful to the Bible. Who knows? His father was a bit, I mean, teaching him a lot of things about God. David now said, God, I know when the captivity of Israel was, was, was resolved. It was like a dream before them. You now call upon the name of the Lord, the Father. All my captivity is not too more, it's not too long. If you can do this for Abraham, and that is not because of the wisdom, nobody praise the wisdom of, uh, of, of Abraham, nobody praise the wisdom of Sarah, nobody praise the, uh, the wisdom that Sarah planned. He, he brought us to the problem up to this up to this state. That you know that there's no wisdom in your brain, there's no understanding in your brain beyond the wisdom of God. I call upon the name of the Lord, the Father, all my captivity. From the you, you know from that particular time, from you know from that particular period that that father, that father, the, 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 look, I want you to look at it again. The Bible says in what it says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the other, the Lord has done great things for them. We call upon the name of the Lord, Father, all my captivities. Lord, we don't eat to Lord. I praise the Lord. You know, I remember when we were in campus, we have a sister when we enter our room. We of our holy, holy sister. And we saw the first half of the world. But now I thought it and then if I we enter our room, you see a lot of things that I can do this number I don't know how looking for in my room, eat it. But I, I thought he, I, she had done it for me, and then she done it for other people. The other person won't and tell me in the hostel. I said I was I thought it was I was the only one that she she did it for. But what did I want to say? Recently, more than every time, you will see I like on my program in the Facebook. We see her like all her program in the Facebook. <coughs> Sorry. And I was looking at her, so this sister can even like my program in the Facebook. Now God has done this, God has done this. You know that's what the captivity that's what the captivity that's what the captivity is mean. Recently I was speaking to one of my brother that, that visited that I think I told my wife, one of the brothers that visited that visited Maryland. Somebody was laughing in the and I remember the, the day he slapped me to where I was, he was ready for an answer on the day and I was crying because I stayed with them. And I also God can, <laughs> you too can go through all this kind of thing. But what I want to say, I because somebody he is reporting to, that's where God, so a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things like that, a lot of things like that. Now call upon the name of the Lord, Father. Return all my captivities. As you return the captivity of Abraham, you promise Abraham that I is going to have a child, and Abraham have a child when the, nobody, even if uh, the family has no hope. Out of hopeless, out of no way, out of everything I've been blocked, out of this thing is not possible. It was out of that situation Abraham have, I see. Call upon the name of the Lord. Father, return all my heart. What is that thing that is still difficult for me to eat? Call, oh, I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. You will return all my captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh my Father, I shall not be in Jesus Christ. I shall not be in the area where my sister was. I shall not be in the area where my sister was. I shall not be in the area where my sister was. I shall not be in the area where my sister was. Oh, my God, I'm 
name of Jesus Christ. Restore all my cavities in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Restore all my cavities in the name of Jesus Christ. All my divine and true. In the name of Jesus Christ. Restore all my cavities in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Not too much of it. All God you bring it to become a millionaire and continue to use the money for your glory. It is not too much of it. All man to buy that you use the best car for your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not too much of it. For my children to be enjoying for your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my father, it's not too much for me. For my my for my parents now that is alive to be enjoying in your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my father, I pray by the power of the Lord of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, many of us we believe that there's a, a, a somebody like me. I only like to come into reality when we are talking. Uh, when you say that uh, somebody go and re represent everyone in the, maybe in like France or something like that, and then you say Matthew, you know you can go and represent uh, some uh, God. Uh, I mean. You can go and represent this. I'm just looking. I'm just seeing like an example. Like in my in my school now, we have something we they call honor roll. Then when you have to be in the honor roll, you, you have to be like three point seven or three points, maybe from three point five. 
I thank God for my academic life since I come to United States. And I always tell some people that even that one too is is something of the past. Because if you want to look at it in reality, let us be sincere. Let, let us be sincere. With my HND, I'm thanking God, but let us be sincere. With my HND is first degree. And then those people I'm doing, I'm sitting down in the class, I'm supposed to be teaching them. If really, in really, in practical. To the extent that I can not even show the result that, okay, I'm not the only one. Maybe we believe that that's the principle in the, for some of us. But when you are saying my result is good, when you are, the question you need to be asking me is that I am where I am supposed to be. Yesterday, you may not know, we are talking with one of our brothers that came yesterday, and he was telling me about the person that was in Ohio, that when he came, he just do about 15 unit courses to become a nurse. Fine. And then he is making the, it was that person that invited him to Ohio to come and, to come and, that person may not even be a believer. But when you want to look at somebody like me, let's say I'm able to present the, the let us be sincere. I'm able to present the result like, oh, this is my result from uh, from Nigeria, and they consider it, and they say, oh, this good, this is a good result. So instead of using two years for nothing, go and use one year. You get what I'm saying? So you can be saying that, oh, my result is fine, is good, but is that the place I'm supposed to be? Let us let us be let us be sincere. Is that the place I suppose? I supposed to be so in that kind of area we call upon the name of the Lord the father in ministry in school in my family not that we are not thanking God but do not forget that I've told Lord this is an open check and the satisfaction is a limitation and uh, wherever you see wherever you able to see that's why you will I mean uh, that's where you will able to go but by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to see far in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are going to go far in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are going to explore in, more in the name of Jesus Christ. Many of us, when I am talking about, uh, okay, look at this man in the ministry, look at what is achieved with maybe, ah, uh, uh, that's his own, own. I'm thanking God, that is his own. Very fine. But let me let me be sincere with you. Some of us we don't like what I'm saying the truth. And I don't care. You know, uh, those limitations lead us to sin. Those poverty lead us to sin. Those not achievement lead us to sin. Because the way we support this the, the, the spirit supposed to help our flesh to be limited is not it, it, the, the, the the material is not there and as a result of thing there are something we need to be doing that the flesh is requesting for at our level but because there's a poverty because there's a limitation we couldn't do it and as a result of this it leads us to a lot of sin that uh, it, 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 it's numerous you can't just continue to be mentioned but we will call upon the name of the lord this evening lord i'm tired of my situation on my tire of the situation I find myself that I'm not enjoying my private life I'm not enjoying my most of the most of them is private life I'm not enjoying it because there's a one stopping block or the other I know what I'm I'm facing privately I know a lot of challenges I'm facing privately, and I know a lot of a lot of sin that is coming because of that private life. But there's nothing. It's like it's like a cage that I need to fight to 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 break that cage in order to 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 get a, a seat. But we call upon the name of the Lord. All things that limit me spiritually. And as a result of that, my, my practical life, my financial life is limited. Lord, I come before you this evening. Remove them, O Lord. Open the cage and give me the way of exit. And whoever is going to consign, either my wife, either my husband, either my mom, either my dad, 
either my friend, either even my enemy, that is going to affect the acid. Father, use them mightily today so that I can get out of the cage I find myself. And you know, I, I know myself, I know a lot of things I face in your private life, in your secret life. I thank God that my, my life will glorify the name of the Lord. But is that where I'm supposed to be? Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Father, all things that cage me, that cage my prosperity, that cage my, that, 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 that cage my ministry, that cage my advancement. I pray today in the night, Father, I remove them in the name of Jesus Christ and let your name be glorified in my, in my life. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Father, I By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, I call because of the good blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, I come as I am. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, open that thing to the new way for me. Open that thing to the new way for me. Open that thing to the new way All the source of temptation, all the thoughts, all the thoughts that have been bringing me down. No, all the thoughts that don't let me have the people in my life. I pray for the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And your name is going to be glorified. And your name is going to be glorified. And your name is going to be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name for this session. We thank you, Lord, because we have poured our mind before you, O Lord. And we know that you need the secrets of our there's nothing I know of my people, I know of myself. There's nothing I had. From this prayer meeting, O oh Lord. Father, we come with all faithfulness. Father, it may not be enough. We pray by the power and the we look at the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, you justify us in the name of Jesus Christ. 
you will rewrite our story in the name of Jesus Christ. Mocker in our life, you will close their mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the key to heavenly bank, I ask, oh Lord, give it to us in the name of Jesus Christ. And wipe away all our debt in the name of Jesus Christ. Those people whom are going to you are going to use for our step up. Father, you will send them to us in the name of Jesus Christ. And from this meaning, a new story is being written down about our life in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord and answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. the Lord. Praise the living God. Bless the name of the Lord for all the prayers we have prayed. The Lord will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless your name because you are great and mighty God. Thank you for your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Lord, as you are going to your word, I pray that God, your word, will speak lives to every dead bones in Jesus' name. Your word will transform our lives in the name of Jesus. Your word will remove every barriers in our lives, O oh God, to the way of greatness in the name of Jesus. Your word will melt off every chains, O oh God, that is hindering us, O oh God, from going to a greater, greater height in Jesus' name. Thank you because you are the Lord. Speak to us this moment to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Begin to look at this word of exhortation that talks about titled Storm in the Journey of Life. Storm in the journey of life. We are reading Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 33. the Lord. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 22 to 33. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him, saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down 
out of this ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. He was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, where didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Praise the Lord. We want to look at what is a storm. A storm can be an abnormal rise of generated of generated by a storm over or above the predicted astronomical tides. It can be from a rain or melting snow that runs off across the land instead of seeping into the ground. We could see how Jesus Christ called the disciples And he told them, and he told them, get into the ship. What are some messages the Lord have sent you to do? And he's telling you, get into that ship because you cannot go with the multitude. They cannot accomplish those mission if the multitude were with them. Jesus has to separate them from the multitude. In our journey of life, in our Christian journey, to, so, to have success or to succeed, there are so many things God is telling us to depart from in order to accomplish his will in our life, in order not to allow this attraction, in order not to allow families, friends, relatives to hinder his goals in our lives. He told them, get into the ship. And the disciples obeyed. Is there any mission or any work God has commissioned into your hands? And you obeyed. But along the way, you started facing some challenges. As if it's not God. Who asked you to do such things? Or willingly you have done it out of the mind that it's hard to be done. We have some people who God did not call them to be a missionary or an evangelist or a pastor. But they have the passion for the lost souls. They have the mind of winning souls for the Lord. They have the mind of helping people with the substances the Lord has given unto them. And in the process of helping, they might face some challenges. Like someone was telling me one day and he said, because her mother was helping someone, helping a family, and the other side 
thought that she was helping that family in order, and this woman is a widow, in order to marry the man in the other family. And sometimes the help, the helping turn around to be that, oh, he or she is doing it, probably is making myself, I mean, like a prostitute. Sometimes you do some help and it's turn around to be like, why did I even do it? But I want to tell you, there is no work ever done to the Lord. Even when the other party is not seeing what you have seen or what God is revealing to, do, to you to do such a thing, there is a reward for it. There is a reward for doing it when you did it out of a pure mind. Out of a mind that this is what God has commissioned me to do. Not because I want to receive anything from the other fellow. That's why I'm doing it. But because God has destined me to do such a thing. The law commanded the disciples to leave the multitude and go into the sheep. And along the way, something happened. Along the way, it was like, God, where is your face? The storm that came upon the Sea of Galilee, most of the seas is surrounded by mountains or hills. Hardly will you see a storm in the neighborhood. But for you to really see what is storms, if you go to villages or where there's a lot of bushes, you know, you will see what is really called storms. And that is mostly in an isolated area. Strong wind can swirl around into a powerful storm very quickly and unexpectedly. When the disciples found themselves in the storm, they kept trying to get into the other side, and yet, for hours, they were making no progress. When you are facing those challenges, and it's like there's no progress, what are your reactions at that period of time? What are your reaction towards people around you at that particular time? What are your reaction even towards God who has called you into the sheep? Paul and Silas, when they were being imprisoned because of preaching the gospel, they did not start murmuring God, mocking him, or saying all kind of bad words. But instead of that, they saw the joy of facing that persecution. They saw the joy of receiving the nails of that kind that Jesus had for us. They didn't see it as a punishment. They didn't see it as their sin has brought this to them. But they have the mind of spirituality which every Christian or disciples of Christ must derive not a mind of carnality. They kept trying to get out to the other side and yet for hours they make no progress. For the wind was contrary And if you look at that verse 24, it says, But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. 
for the wind was contrary. He's now in the midst of the sea where they cannot just say, oh, I want to get out. Where they cannot just make a quick decision, they have to leave this place. Maybe you find yourself in a problem whereby you cannot make that quick decision. But within you are like God, have mercy upon me. And at that point of time, you might have been mocked by people around you. Even though such sea or your storm might come as a period or as, as due to your disobedience to God, by that time that you cannot make that quick decision, don't curse yourself. Don't try to harm yourself. And don't think that where well, it is over. Because it is never hovered until it is hovered. Praise the Lord. In as much death has not come to you right away, don't ever thought it is over. Everybody born on this heart will face their own challenges. Whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're a born again Christian or not, Bible says, Woe to the habitation of the earth because the devil has come. That battle that you are born to this health is there. And for you to now say, okay, I surrender to God. I let the affections of the world is a battle also for you. And for you to now say, God, is now you and I. There is also a battle to face. But every challenge that comes across your life that so threatens you, don't ever thought it is over. Of course, some Christian will tell you, are you blind before you make that decision? Can't you have a second thought? And some will tell you, take this direction. Take that direction. But the, 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 the best person to ever seal counsel for that will never misdirect you is to go to God in prayer. Throw yourself in fasting and prayer. And say, God, do not let me perish. I've sinned unto you. I've disobeyed you. Bail me out. Because of the blood of Christ on the cross of Calvary, Father, bail me out. And before you know it, he will bail you out. And if the threatening comes as a result of your righteousness towards the work of God, praise God. They were at the point whereby all efforts they make is no progress. For the wind was contrary. The wind and waves were causing the boats to rock and sway violently, threatening to capsize. So they were in danger of seeking and perishing in the midst of the sea. You can imagine the midst of the sea, and in those days, there's nothing like I want to call 911. In those days, there's nothing I want to make a call to someone that say, oh, this is, this, this is where I am. About a few weeks ago, 
I had a patient whereby he was fed up of life and he thought the only thing is to kill himself. But thank God for prayer of mothers. When you are parents, when you are in hot temper, don't curse your children because you will pay for it. Thank God for our mother. Our mother is a, his mother is a Christian. Praying for him. So at that period, he, he stated what was going on in his workplace that really frightened him. I was like, well, that's the end for him. So he called his, he tested his mother. And that is why it's always good. A response or call. When someone called you, you have a missed call, call that person back. Negligent of responding can cost another people's life. He tested his mother and he told him, he tested, I'm going to hang myself. The mother saw it and he quickly they are not living together. They live about an hour, I mean, an hour drive apart. The mother quickly called 911 that this is what my son sent. Before they got there, he has hung himself, but they broke into the door and they lose the rope. And immediately they started performing CPR on him and they brought him to UVA. But he survived it. I was telling him, I said, God love you. And I was telling his mother, you're a good mother. If you are the type of someone that ignore call, you will have lost this child. And she had only two children, one boy and one girl. So the son was the one that, wanted, that hanged himself. No matter how busy your schedule might be, Respond to calls. Respond to people's messages. Someone who sends you a message to is busy, but he create that time. I always tell people, if you can find time to go and pee because your bladder is over full, you are so busy and it's so it's full, you don't want to have UTI, you went straight to the restroom. That's if you are so busy and you are hungry, you don't have the time, you create small time to eat something. That same little time, use it to reply to people's call. Use it to reply to people's call. This mother saved the son's life. Praise the Lord. In their own time, there's nothing like we want to make a call. But they have the power of prayer. They prayed and call upon Jesus. Every resources God has given to us, there's a purpose for it. Let's utilize it in a way that His name will be glorified without any abandonment. So they were in a danger of sinking and perishing in the midst of the sea. Sometimes you wonder why Jesus didn't prevent the storm from happening. And it happens, one, to strengthen your characters. Two, to teach you a lesson about God's will. When you find yourself in a storm, you need to get ready to learn some important truths. When you refuse to learn that important truth, that temptation, that trial will come again. When you refuse to learn when people are telling you this thing is not good, And you think like, where well, I'm always busy, where well, I don't have this time. Out of no time, we have to find time. Two, it's happened 
I mean three, it happens to experience God in a fresh and new way. The storm, the storm gave Jesus another opportunity to walk in their lives because it leads to experience of his great salvation and victory over the storm. Praise the Lord. The, term, the, the, term, I mean, the testimony of this man that his mother revived, it just come across my message. It's not something I've even written down. But I'm, I believe God wants to brought out something to us. And that is why it gave me that glance revelation of it to share it. Number four, have faith in power of prayer of Jesus. Verse 23, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Have faith in power of prayer. Five, God allowed the storm to get your eyes open back on Jesus. God will allow some storm to make your eyes open back on Jesus. Sometimes we might think that what we are doing is, 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 is the, the right one, but when those storms come, it's God, it's God, it's mean God is calling our attention to something. So it's now determining how we respond to what God is calling our attention to. How we look at those challenges, we determine what lesson God wants us to derive from it. How he wants our eyes, our, our understanding to be better wide open than when we ever thought of it before. Like Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We were compassed with a lot of so trials. But God is saying, even despite all those things, let's lay aside those things that can hinder you from accomplishing His will. Those things that is not beneficial to the growth of others. Bible says, lay them aside. Those things you know is not helping. Those words you know is not helping. Bible says lay them aside. And say by to looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The disciples look unto Jesus. 
God is telling us at every storm that comes across our journey in this life, let's look unto Jesus. It's only him that can never fail. It's only him that understand that we understand you better than your next closest pause in life. And he's only one who can make that way. Heart of no way. Jesus knew what they are passing through. Verse 25. And in the and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them walking on the sea. Verse 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, If it is thou, Bid me come unto thee on the water. You see, he allowed doubt, that's fullness. If it is you, let me come. And Jesus told him, Come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Jesus is ever present at anywhere we find ourselves. In your closest, in your darkest hours of the night, Jesus is ever present. Let us always acknowledge Him without being overwhelmed with the waves of the sea, without being overwhelmed with what is surrounding us, with what people are saying. But be overwhelmed with the Word of God, with prayer. And having a deep relationship from God. Jesus saves their lives. In the storms of life you are passing, you are facing, God still wants you to save lives, not to destroy lives. So that their faith can be strengthened and they too can. Be able to know that yes, God live it. As this woman saved the life of her son by picking the phone immediately, checking the text message, calling 911. If not, she will have lost a soul. When someone is in need of your prayer or is in need of something from you, do you save that person's life or you ignore? Or you perceive as if it's not being directed to you? God is telling us, out of the storms of your life, save life. Because Jesus is ever present to save your life. Jesus is ever present so that you will not perish. And that is why God sent him to die for us. So that we will not go to hellfire. The rescue others from going to hellfire with what God has given unto you. True messages we can send. Yesterday, uh, there's a message that someone sent to me to God's glory. I always send Bible messages, daily manners, and this person and this person is not our member is not the per life member. But as many of my contacts, I send them daily manners. Every messages I have, I send it to them. There was a time she was like, 
I always send messages to correct women. What of men? I replied her. But yesterday she said, I just want to share this with you. The daily manners you have been sending have been very encouraging and uplifting. Also, there are some that have been sent and it was God speaking directly to me. Based on certain circumstances I was experienced at that time. At one time, I almost gave up on something that I saw was going wrong. And your test came in, which was a word from God to me. I thank God for your life and your persistence. It's a great way of evangelizing. May God continue to use you as a vessel. I pray open heavens upon your life and your household. I just felt like sharing this with you, and I reply her, all glory to God in highest. We shall not miss heaven in Jesus' name. Don't ever think that what you are doing is not appreciated, even when nobody tells you. Always know that you are saving lives. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Let us thank God for this word we have heard. Let's appreciate his holy name. Let's tell him that God is there. You have asked me to enter the ship, to leave the multitude, to leave those things that can hinder me from moving forward. Lord, the heart of obedience. Obedient from the beginning to the end of my life. Father, give unto me. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, Bible says we are being compounded with so greatness. So many things we are, is being, we are being compounded with. But God is telling us, enter that ship. Lay aside those weights. Pray that God, the grace will remain focused unto you. Not to be moved by the storms of life. Lord, give unto me. Pray that God, every mistake my parents have made, may I not follow into such paths. Everything they have done wrongly, without me even known, Lord, break the powers that can make that can load me into such a thing. Pray that God, at every storm that comes across my way, in my Christian journey, help me to remain focused. Take away every form of doubtfulness in my life. Give me the heart to always focus on you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Pray that God make me a lifesaver. That nobody's life will perish from my hands. Lord, make me a lifesaver. In words, in deeds, in action. Lord, make me a lifesaver. That woman saved the life of his son, her son. Father, let me know you, let the word of my mouth not bring condemnation to me or punishment to me in the future, both now and in the future. Pray that God order my steps to the path of righteousness. Where you are correcting me and rebooking me, every powers of flesh that want to, wants me to, to take it in a, in a carnality way, Lord, destroy such power. Father, give me the power to walk in righteousness, to be more spiritual.
Pray that God any storm confronting my life, challenging your authority in my life, let the power that silence the storm in those days silence those storms. Every storm that always arises, maybe weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, Lord, silence those storms. Every repeated trials that always come, O oh Lord, or having a repeated dream of something that is not good, destroy the powers behind it. And give me the open my eyes of understanding to learn the lesson you want me to learn from it. Pray that God open my eyes of understanding. Let me not be wise in my own understanding. Help me to always acknowledge you. Acknowledge your movements. Acknowledge your direction, your authority, your mindset for my life. Pray that God let me not miss the goal. Let me not miss the goal. Let me not miss the goal, Lord. And pray that God may I not perish in the wilderness of life. Lord, where I need to be softening, Father, soften me. Let not my hardness make me perish in the wilderness of life. Pray that God is there any way I've shown you out of the boats of my life. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I welcome you back. In your mercy, Lord, come back into the boat of my life. The Bible says, for without him we can do nothing. Say, Jesus, come back into the boat of my life. Every sin I've committed that I've lodged you out. Lord, have mercy on me. Any actions I've taken ignorantly that I've locked you out. Father, have mercy on me and come back into the boat of my life. I want to have a unique relationship with you. Pray that God help our churches. Commit our churches, the body of Christ, into the hands of God. That every storm that is rolling in these churches, in the body of Christ, Lord, let that we command this, the power of God to silence them. Every storm that doesn't want great love of Christ to abide between a leader and a member, between a member and a leader. Lord, destroy the power behind it. Silence those storms in our churches, Lord. Let agape love dominate. Let agape love reign the more. It's not a love that is what you pay me, I will pay you back. It's not a love that looks for what you will pay me back before I can render it. Bible says, while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. He didn't look at what we can give him, but he died for us. When we have no hope, he died for us so that we can have hope. So that our mindset, our mindset can, can be opened. To his plans for our lives. Pray that God breathe upon your churches. Breathe upon the body of Christ. 
cause divine revival, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's commit our convention coming unto the hands of God. Our Father, help all our leaders from all the regional overseers, from GS and as many pastors coming with him, Lord, help them, strengthen them, empower them. Pray that God bless them, O oh Lord. As they are running to save souls, their soul will not be found wanting in your kingdom. Pray that as many that will travel from every region of the hills that God will declare safe journey messes. There will be no accidents. Every hitters of flesh and suckers of blood will bound and paralyze, destroyed by the fire of Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Pray as many ministers that will come that God will empower them. There will be inspiration from the Lord. They will speak to us from the throne of grace. And our ear will be opened to receive from the Lord. And those words will benefit our life. It will not just fall on the, on, on the soil of our heart, but it will be rooted and germinate and bring forth hundreds and thousands of false increases. Pray for the peace of God in every way. In this country, in Africa, Lord, let your peace reign. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, blessed Redeemer, we thank you, we bless you because you are so good. We thank you because you never fail. We thank you because your word is yea and amen. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. In all where you have spoke to us, give us an understanding. Give us the heart of correction. Give us the heart of yieldingness. Give us the heart of progressing in your will. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because you are the Lord. Help all our leaders, O God. Bless them, O God. Strengthen and empower them that their labor will never be in vain. When their work and our work shall be passing through fire, may you not be consumed. In the name of Jesus, make us a lifesaver. In the name of Jesus, to save souls who are perishing and to uphold those who even have known you. In the name of Jesus, and our souls will not be found wanting in your kingdom. Father, whatsoever we will do that will make us to lose that kingdom, may we not embark in it. There was a woman that God, God, God was using, transforming lives through the revelation he had, she had when she died and God wake her up. And there's a warning. God told her, don't remarry. But here come these evangelists from the kingdom of darkness and entice her. And God has earlier told her, when you remarry in, before six months, you will die. Father, whatsoever we will do, that we make our here to, back, to, to be backward to what you have told us earlier. Father, may we not embark in such a journey. This woman, I don't know what happened. The man loved him. He remar she remarried. Third year of her, third months of her marriage, she died. And before she died, there's a revelation to a young boy. 
that saw her. And the old girl was telling her, see this person? She had a mighty mansion in my kingdom. But because of her disobedience, I'm going to demolish that mansion. This boy woke up and told his father, before a few weeks, this lady evangelist died. Not up to three months of her marriage. Father, the journey we will embark on that will make all, that will make you to back to us, to back your back to us. May we not embark in such journey. A journey that will make everlasting and its eternal regrets to our lives. May we not embark on such a journey. The heart of taking, yielding to corrections, to warning. Father, give unto us. Give unto our leaders. Give unto the body of Christ. Because despite the revelation is going on, that your coming is at hand. Some are still acting as if I still want to enjoy everything in this world. Father, the Bible says we brought nothing to the world, and we take nothing out of it. Give this vision to every soul to let them realize. That whatsoever they have acquired on the heart, it will, they will not take any, a single pain, out of the world in Jesus' name. Father, we magnify your name. Thank you because you have answered. As many that are sick house day, I decree your healing power to flow through them in the name of Jesus. Lord, any soul that their hearts their faith is weakened. Their faith is sick. Let there be transformation in the name of Jesus. Waking up their faith, O oh God. Shed your light into the darkness of their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover the prayers with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Okay, the time is up. Let's begin to appreciate God for everything. Thank Him for the prayer. Give him all the praise, give him all the glory. He has brought us this far. The one who came the wind. Hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Quickly, in the next few minutes, we are going to pray. For the church. Someone was asking, he said, what is the greatest problem of the church today in this world? And I believe that the greatest problem that the church is facing in the dispensation is nothing but purity. Because when the church is not pure, God cannot use the church. When we are not pure, God cannot use us. We're going to pray for the church of God quickly. And say that God will purify the church. Ask men in person at the church of God. That God will purify all. That he will not just cut off the branches of impurity, but uproot it from the roots.
Father, let every impurity of the church to go all over God of the world. For your church of God that you have established here on earth, O Lord Father. Let every impurity be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Let it be uprooted, O God, from the root, O Lord. Pray, Father, children, use us mightily for revival in this end time. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We'll look at backsliding is getting rampant. People are backsliding. We we'll ask why. One of the secrets of backsliding that I have noticed, even in my life and in the life of those I've worked close with over the years, is our prayer life and our devotional life. When we start going down in those areas, gradually backsliding is setting in. We're going to pray that God will increase our prayer life. We rekindle the zeal. Because we can never be greater. Because our spiritual life cannot be greater than our, than our prayer life. That's what the Bible says. We should pray without season. God, when the zeal is kindled, backsliding it will be far. The disciples said, Lord Jesus, teach us to pray. Prayer keep us connected to the Lord at every time. That our bond relationship with God will be stronger in our communication with Him. We will more fervent. For the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you, we bless your name. Father, we thank you for the verses that you've used today. Father, we thank you for the first section, the second section of God, and the closing section. Father, I will thank you because you've, our captivity is, is rolled away. We we'll thank you because all that we've lost to God is restored. Father, I will thank you because every cage, caging us spiritually not to expand, oh God, Father, it is broken in Jesus' name. Father, I will thank you because every storm in our lives, oh God, is taken away in Jesus' name. Father, I will thank you because you are in our boats. Father, you will lead us to the shore safely. Thank you, Father. Lord, we commit as many members of this church into your hands. Lord, wherever they are sleeping or awake, Father, we ask that you will touch them, that you will minister to them, that you will reveal yourself to them, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Guide our heart, the imagination of our heart, the worth of our mouth, O oh God. May it be pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall.